Hey folks, Matt from ArtOfTheImage.com. We've got a viewer writing in. This is Justin. I hope I'm saying that right. Uh, the heading of the email is Nikon D750 or Nikon D810. He says, hey, I love watching your channel. It is very helpful for all the viewers watching your channel. I'm a beginner and I want to become a professional photographer. I'm stuck between the Nikon D750 and the Nikon D810 or should I wait for the Nikon D760? Help me out to choose the right one. If you suggest the D750 or D810, then is it better to buy a new DSLR or a refurbished one? Nikon D750, D810 are still better performing DSLRs even today. Nikon D750 has better autofocus than the D810, but on the other hand, the D810 has better megapixels, 36, than the D750 at 24. Does this make any difference in the quality of an image? Is it better to buy a DSLR with better autofocus or with more megapixels? Do you suggest 185 and 50mm portrait lens too? Last question for you. Which was the first DSLR that came to mind with any reasons when I said the D750 or D810? Thanks in advance and continuing to do and continue doing the great work. Best regards from Justin in India. Thank you, Justin. Thanks for your, um, the compliment, and thanks for your question. Uh, I'm going to answer your last question first. Which one came to mind first? Immediately, my mind went to the D810. I shot both. I've, I've shot extensively with the 610, the 750, and the D810. I love the D810. I think at the moment now, for the price you can get them for, it's the sweet spot. That 36 megapixels really makes a difference over the 24. No, I'm not saying you can't work nicely with the, the 750 or the 610 with their 24. But man, when you have the 810 and you've seen those what I call power files from the 36, they're they're a beautiful thing. The 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 resolution is just it's it's there, and uh, I would argue that the 810 uh, out down to 24 in an export or even lower is as clean or even cleaner than the 750 or the 610 at high ISO. So to me, no negative. And I know probably on paper the 750 has a little bit better autofocus system, but for me when I've shot the two. Now, bear in mind, I'm, I'm largely a focus, center focus, recompose kind of guy. I shoot portraits. Um, I shoot a lot, uh, a lot of um, still life or uh, street photography. Uh, I shoot events. I'm typically never using a tracking system or high frame rate per second. So if that's your thing, then maybe the 750, would, you would see the difference. But I think the 810 is a very competent autofocus system. It's one of the higher level ones from Nikon. And from my experience between shooting the two, I, I, I had no problems with it. I think it's very good. Uh, and I just really like the 810. That's the way I would go. I think that juicy 36 megapixels is worth it. I would also suggest that perhaps the 810 is a little bit better uh, video camera. I think it just seemed to have got a little nicer. Not that, not that the 750 was problematic, but I did seem to get just a little nicer video file out of the 810. To answer your other questions, uh, waiting for the 760? I would say no. We haven't even had it announced. We've been talking about it. We've been speculating about it because it's fun to do so. We've been discussing what we want in the 760. But uh, it hasn't been announced. So we don't know. I would get it 810 now, get some use out of it. And if the 760 is something you want, then you can always sell the 810, probably for a minimal loss, and get into the 760. But get the 810 and get shooting now. That's what I would do. Or get the 750 if that's your choice and, and start shooting now. Uh, let's see here. Better to buy new or refurbished? Well, for me, a factory refurb, uh, not a, a used refurb, but like a factory refurb. So brand new, come off the line, dialed in. Canon does a lot of that. Um, that, to me, is a great deal. It's a great way to get a really good deal on a camera, and I've never had a problem with that. I really like that. I think it's a good value, good price point. That's what I would do. Uh, are the 750 and 810 still performing uh, by today's standards? Absolutely. The 810 is still a top contender. I mean, the 850 beats it by a bit. The A7R2 does, but, I mean, arguably, it's in the top probably five of performing uh, full-frame cameras still today. Uh, great camera. And the 750 still is. It's right up there too. Very high performing sensor. Um, the only thing they both lag in is no 4K. So, I mean, if you need 4K video, neither of them is an option. If you don't, they do great 1080 and um, really nice cameras to shoot with. I would easily love a pair of D810s to shoot portrait and events I was going to buy today. I, I mean, I could also do it with the 750s or the 610s, but money being no objective, the 810 is a real sweet spot right now. What was the other question? Um, difference in, in quality of the image. Again, I think I kind of addressed that between 36 megapixels and 24. Yeah, you got more resolution and a more detailed image in the 810's 36 megapixel file. The 750's 24 is still very nice, but you do have more power in there. And if you were looking at high ISO ability, exporting it at a lower megapixel uh, output is going to clean it up and perhaps make it even better than the performance of the of the lower resolution sensor. Um, is it better to buy a better autofocus or more megapixels? 
I guess that depends if you shoot sports or wildlife and you think the 750 is going to be more to your advantage for it's a, perhaps uh, added benefits in tracking, then I guess you need that. To me, the 810 is the way to go. Do I suggest an 85 and a 50 portrait lens too? I mean, you know I love my 50s, but the 50s, I love them because I like shooting them on DX bodies, on APS-C bodies. With the full frame bodies, the 610, the 750, the D5, the D810, the D850, I, I would get an 85 F18G. I think it's the it's a perfect uh, mix of performance. It's a very, very good performing lens at a very good price. If The only reason to pay the F for an F14 is not necessarily more performance other than speed. Because the F18, the 85 F18G still is very nice bouquet, very nice, you know, out of focus area in the background, good low light ability. I mean, there's not a lot of difference between F18 and F14, but there's a lot of price difference. So for me, the 85 F18G is the way to go. For a lot of pros, they like to go to the F14G, and I'm not knocking that. I'm just saying for me, I like the value proposition of the quality and price of the 85 F18G, and the 50s not something I would use much on a full frame. I have. If there's been some videos and some work I've done with the 610 and the 50, and it's nice. It's just not my preferred lens. The 85 is my go-to. So uh, I think I've addressed all your your questions there. Um, both very good cameras, but I would go with the 810, and I would get an 85 F18G. And I would pair that with a 24 to 120 F4 VR, which is my favorite all-around zoom that I would add with it. What do you guys think? Do you agree with me? agree with my answers on which camera to go with on whether or not I should wait for the 760 on the autofocus all the points we covered here let me know what you guys think it's always great to hear back from you guys when our viewers are writing in with questions stay tuned we'll be back soon here at artoftheimage.com